Good evening, G1s. I am Master Wayne for another G1 interview, and I'm joined by the live stream gaming goddess that is G1 Kanan. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hello, everyone. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing very well. So, well, how are you? I'm fantastic. A lot of technical difficulties, but I think we've passed them now. I think so. Okay, we're going to start off with some screw attack questions, as we always do, and then mm -hmm. go on to some personal questions, personal work questions, and then gaming confessions for this interview, and then we'll oh, finish dear. off with some gaming questions. All right. So, G1 Kanan, how did you discover ScrewAttack.com? Through YouTube, looking up just different game-related stuff and going through the black hole that is YouTube, I eventually came across Hard News, Clip of the Week, other things they've done, and then I found out, oh, they have a website. That's exactly how I got there, but I was a little <laughs> bit inebriated. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's still the same effect, really. <laughs> so what's your favorite show on ScrewAttack? I actually, I'm a really big fan of Hard News. Like, I don't really read a lot of review sites or things like that. I just, I like the format of hard news. I like that it just gives you the exact information that you need. No filling, no bullshitting around, and it's just funny. I love, uh, I love Sean on that show now. He's incredible. I love Sean. <laughs> uh, Sean does a great job. Like, all the hard news hosts, like, that we've had are fantastic, but I think Sean just really just nails it. He really does. So, out of all the hard show hosts, who's your favorite? Oh, uh, we're going to ask that question. Um, to be brutally honest, I did not come in in the era that was Destin. Aww. Um, I came in around Jared's time, and Jared was probably one of my favorite hard news hosts. But again, as I state, everybody that sat in that chair has brought something to it. But I think Jared was one of my favorites. But he's kind of being replaced by Sean. I'm sorry, Jared. Slowly, slowly pushing Jared out. So Who's your favorite ScrewAttack member of staff? I can't say that, because so many of them are my friends. <laughs> oh, that that's a hurtful one. <laughs> I really actually genuinely like everybody there. I really do. They're all fantastic, wonderful people. You know, some of them are great to just, you know, pardon my French, bullshit around with. They're all just absolute wonderful people, and I've had the experience of hanging out with every single one of them. That's great. Nice original answer. But what if they were all hanging off a cliff and you could save one of them? <laughs> You're really making this hard for me. Uh, well, uh, that, that's the it's horrible okay, it's one. Okay. You don't have to answer. No, don't answer. <laughs> I, I was just going to say, it's like, well, then I, I, by proxy, have to save Craig because he's the one that created it and therefore knows how to hire the people. <laughs> so by proxy, I'd have to kind of pick Craig. <laughs> or I could just throw everybody off the cliff and just say that I own Screw Attack now. Actually, can we do that? Don't tell them I said that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it might be a bit too late for that. <laughs> Nobody knows. What was the last thing on the site that made you laugh? I think when they let Takahata 101 into there, the, the fact that Sean never really gets to partake in like the, the end of the, the, the hard news jokes. So to actually see Sean be the one behind the glass poking fun at the hard news host was fantastic. I haven't seen that bit yet. I, need, I really need to you, go and watch it. You you do, because it was just... Because you don't expect... It's like, why is one of the members of Team Four Star at Screw Attack? And, oh, there's Sean making the funny <laughs> behind the glass. Good to know. <laughs> what are your fondest memories of Screw Attack? What's been one of the things that stands out for you? I think, honestly, SGC coming back. Like, uh, I never got to go to the original SGCs, uh, but I went to this year's and the previous year, so when they kick-started and had it brought back, and they did the marathon. So it was, it, was, it was fantastic to actually go to SGC and to actually meet the members of Screw Attack. You know, these are people that I've been talking to for a long time at this point, but I kind of sold myself on I'm never actually going to get to meet them in person. Uh, I didn't really go to a lot of conventions outside of Canada, so I just figured, aside from Sam, who I met when he came up to Toronto, I wasn't going to meet any of them. 
So the fact that SGC actually did make a comeback, and I got to meet them, I got to hang out with them, have drinks with them, and stuff like that, it was a fantastic experience. Like, they are exactly who they are on screen. They aren't faking it, they aren't pretending for the camera, these are exactly who they are. Fantastic, and that ends the screw attack section of the interview. How are you hanging in there, Kanan? I think I'm doing pretty good. We'll see about that. <laughs> well, I could make this really awkward because nobody can see this, but I have Satsuke's butt behind me, yep. and I could just stroke it during the conversation, <laughs> <laughs> and nobody will see this except you, so I could just yep, make this me. really awkward for you. <laughs> uh, I'm doing this half naked, by the way, so joke's on you. Uh, okay. <laughs> joke's on you, so am I. <laughs> ha! The tables have been turned. <laughs> so, you are known for your live streams. One of the ones that caught my eye had to have been the G1 Mario Party After Dark. Oh, yes. <laughs> that included that... yourself, uh, Flying Glass, Trent... Trent Tipman? Trent Chipman. Trent Chipman. And, of and course, Epic the Game legend, Music. James Ronald. <laughs> in which I won, by the way. Yeah. Nobody had faith in me, although I had more faith than the nobody that was voting for Trent. Nobody was Team Orange. That's a shame. <laughs> it actually was kind of a shame that not a single person in the chat room was Team Orange. <laughs> so, uh, how did all that come about? How did you all get together for that? Uh, well, James, I actually met uh, probably a few months after I moved up to Toronto. Now, uh, Flying Glass and I had for the longest time been talking on Twitter, and then I moved up to Toronto... And he lives about two hours outside of Toronto. So James, like I said, I met, uh, he used to do uh, game DJ nights here in the city. And I just happened to go to one of them, chatted it up, and became friends with him instantly. And then uh, Flying Glass, I actually invited him down for uh, my birthday party, the first one that I had here in Toronto. And we've been, like, best friends ever since. So he comes down every so often to hang out with myself and James. And we go on shenanigans adventures normally to the uh, to the Asian mall here in Toronto. Fantastic. Yep. I've never heard James swear so much. Every sentence is F this, <laughs> F that. <laughs> Welcome to James in person. <laughs> yeah, I, I was quite... Uh, I had to take a step back. It's like, whoa, James, calm down. <laughs> there are other words in the English language, mate. <laughs> but that's the most fun one. Yeah, definitely. And it's multi-purpose. <laughs> and your... Extra Life Charity Marathon stream. Your 25-hour yes. stream. How'd you get through that? With a lot of caffeine and a lot of crying at the end. Not crying so much, but more or less. I, I made the mistake of, in the last hour, wrapping myself in my blanket. I'm just like, I just want to sleep. I've been at this for 24 hours. <laughs> it won't mind an hour. Uh, speaking of the Extra Life, I'm actually doing that again this year. Thank and you. it's going to be October 25th. And starting at 10 a.m. Eastern. This year, it actually is 24 hours. The only reason it was 25 the previous year was it was the same weekend that the clocks went back an hour. Yeah, clever. <laughs> yeah. But this year, it's 24 hours. And this year, I actually have prizes that will be raffled off during the stream. Fantastic. Everybody get over to Kanan's Twitch channel. I'll leave a link somewhere. Um... What what games did you uh, play during the 25-hour uh, live stream? During the 25-hour, we started off with Castle Crashers, which has now become a joke between a lot of the people that uh, frequent my stream. It's called Waiting for Players, because Castle Crashers, especially the PC version, has some of the worst connection issues. So you keep getting that lovely spiral of waiting for players, waiting for players, waiting for players. It was like pulling teeth trying to play the game, but we were just having a fun time just like crapping on each other making jokes uh during castle crashers i was joined by uh my good friend matt or dark flick he's actually my partner in doing the extra life and then we were also joined by nate graves another famous g1 and a good friend of mine alochi alochi actually joined in on quite a bit during the stream so we did castle crashers uh, we played Path of Exile, which I'm sure everybody has heard Sam and Chad go on and on about. It's a free-to-play, almost Diablo-style game with a leveling grid similar to Final Fantasy X. Fantastic. We also played Left 4 Dead, 
We tried Dead Island, but the connection issues on that were atrocious. <laughs> uh... Trying to think. We played a lot of different games. Uh, Borderlands 2 was one that we played and sunk in for a few hours. And a couple other free-to-play games on Steam we tried out, which we realized never again. (laughs) This year, one of the big games that we're going to be playing is Gauntlet. So. Fantastic source. Right. Mm. Um, Your, one of your latest live streams, you try and outlast, aren't you? I did what? Outlast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on one second. There was an audio clip, so I didn't actually hear that. So on my last stream, I did what? Outlast. Oh, God. Oh, uh, that game. For those of you that can't see this, I am severely face palming and rubbing my temples. Oh, <laughs> uh, that, that game. <sighs> Honestly, I think the third stream... Cause I finished it in three streams, I do believe. Because I sat and plunked at it for a few hours each time. I think by the third stream, I literally actually just said, Fuck this game. I'm done. I'm done being scared. I don't care if I'm going to die. Because I'm just going to come back and keep doing this again. Whatever. I still haven't finished Whistleblower yet, though. <clears throat> to hell with Outlast. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> I will give the game credit. It was very, very scary. The actual setting for the game was fantastic for a horror game. But I'm kind of getting tired of these horror games where all you do is run and run and run and hide. That seems to be what a lot of horror games are that are coming out lately. And they're fun for a little bit, but after a while, it's just like, it's the same drill. Run around, scream like a lunatic until you get to the point you're supposed to be at in the story. Progress the story a little bit, run some more like a little girl. And don't forget to scream. (laughs) And scream a little bit. Maybe soil yourself in the process. Just for the added effect. I like using Nutella. (laughs) Uh. (laughs) That's a stupid joke. I'll edit that out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have to leave it in now. Oh. I can't be the only stupid one. <laughs> have you Not got any, fair. any future projects coming up that you might want to let us in on? Uh, well, like I said, the the big one that's coming out is the next Extra Life. Uh, another project that I'm working on in collaboration with uh, Epic Game Music is hopefully... By the end of November, early December, uh, I'm in the process of, and I won't name names just yet because we're still waiting for confirmation and stuff back, but we're compiling a, it'll be download only, charity album that will be, all proceeds will be put towards uh, Toys for Tots. So all the money from that album, and like I said, I've had a few artists confirm that they would be sending me in. In fact, uh, one of the groups that actually did send in, I will name them because they already gave me their, their music, is uh, On Being Human. And oh, if you guys haven't oh checked gosh. out On Being Human, they are fantastic. And they're wonderful, wonderful guys, too. I got to meet them at MAGFest, and they're absolute sweethearts. And I am so beyond touched and excited that they actually said right away, like they were one of the first people to respond to my email going, yes, we would love to do this. Uh, we're in the process of making a song that fits what you'd like so when it's done we will send it to you and they did that is awesome news that is (laughs) yeah so it will only be download only because to actually go and make CDs it would kind of just like destroy the cost of anything raised for the kids that ends your little part of the uh, interview and we move on (laughs) to the middle segment, which I like to call the Gamer Confessions. Oh dear. Do you have anything anything to confess that you're not proud of <sighs> being a gamer? I have not beaten a single Mega Man game, ever. Oh, for shame. <laughs> oh no. I, I try, but I'm just like, I was never really into Mega Man. I, I'm more of a Zelda person. I've never completed a Zelda game. Well, shame on you, then. There we go. (laughs) 
This goes two ways, you see. <laughs> <laughs> so is that it? You've never played a... Well, never finished a Mega Man game? Mm, I'm trying to think what else I should should admit that won't cause backlash on me of being a girl gamer. <laughs> well, everybody knows I absolutely detest first-person shooters. I can't stand those. Thank you. There's very, <laughs> there's very few games that have, like, an FPS mechanic that I enjoy. Like, The Last of Us, I love the hell out of that game. But I also like it more for the stealth mechanics and such. Mm. But I can't stand first-person shooters. I suck at first-person shooters, which is one of the reasons why I hate them. <laughs> uh, there's Half-Life and Doom. That's that's the only things I'll play. I just mm-hmm. don't like first-person shooters. I, I play Borderlands. I... I, I Honestly, though, in Borderlands, you're just like, I'm just going to aim and hope for the best and just kind of rotate back and forth, and eventually I'm going to hit something. Oh, and if not, I, I, Yes. And worst comes to worst, my friend Isan can run them over with the pink tank. <laughs> Which I think, in all honesty, that's probably the last video I've posted on Screw Attack in a while, was where we, uh, we, we gave a, and I air quote this, sex ed uh, teaching to Isan. In Borderlands. Ah, fantastic. We, we, I'm pretty sure we made him cry. <laughs> right, that ends the gaming confessions. I hope you feel like a, a new lady. I don't know, I might have people lynch me after the Mega Man comment. <laughs> <laughs> I love the music, though. I absolutely adore the Mega Man music. Oh, I just... Yeah. I could never really beat the games. It always comes down to the one... The one power you've got to use on on Doctor Wily, and yeah. You have to figure out what that is, and you end up dying, and oh. yeah. That's what I hate about it. Okay, Little Kanan we'll... did not have the patience to deal with that. Yeah, and dying in the process, and losing all your lives, and all you continues. Yeah. And we're moving on to our last segment of the interview, which is the random gaming questions. G1 Kanan, what is your favorite system of all time? I'm going to have to... Honestly, it's a tie between the SNES and the PS2. Because those two systems I found had like the biggest collection of good RPGs. RPGs are my favorite genre to play. And I can't really say that I like the PS2 more than the SNES and vice versa. I found that both of them had the largest amount of good RPGs. And they also had a lot of RPGs that kind of flew under the radar like uh, one of my favorite franchises with the exclusion of three it can burn in a fire is Shadow Hearts that was released on the PS2 Shadow Hearts 1 and 2 were beautiful beautiful RPGs that they just kind of fell under the radar I do believe Shadow Hearts 1 released a couple weeks to a month prior to Kingdom Hearts and when Kingdom Hearts came out that just stomped everything out of the way I love Kingdom Hearts I'm a big kid. <laughs> I, oh no, I love Kingdom Hearts also, but like I said, in the in the world of advertising, Kingdom Hearts completely destroyed Shadow Hearts in that field. That's a shame. Um, mm-hmm. What are your favorite RPGs for the uh, SNES? My favorite RPGs for the SNES, uh, clearly, Final Fantasy IV is my favorite of all the Final Fantasy games. Uh, another RPG that's very near and dear to my heart is Lufia Two. Rise of the Sinistrals. That was a fantastic RPG uh, with some really bitch puzzle elements. <laughs> so, uh, actually, fond memories to that game was my best friend and I growing up. Like, you know, this was the days of Nintendo Power and not having access to the internet for anything. So her and I would almost take turns renting our copies of Lufia. <laughs> and so she would call me when she had a copy and she'd be like, she'd be like I've made it this far, I can't do this puzzle. And I'm like, okay, for this puzzle, and I would walk her through how to do the puzzle. And then, of course, she'd progress further than me. So the following week, I would rent the game, and then I'd be like, okay, I'm stuck at this puzzle, did you get this? And she's like, yeah, and then she would walk me through the puzzle. So it was kind of like we were each other's own game facts in that aspect. (laughs) And we did that with a lot of games, whether it was uh, games that I borrowed from her... Or, again, vice versa, she borrowed from me. I wrote uh, another RPG, actually, that kind of not too many people have played is Illusion of Gaia. Beautiful, beautiful game. Um, And I never would have honestly heard about it, 
but she had it. Her dad was a very old school gamer, so he always found the most random, off the grid video games, like uh, the uh, Wizardry and E, like all those games. Yeah, he found he had those games. So those were actually my first encounter ever seeing these games was watching her father play. So what are you and playing at the minute? At the current moment, uh, I'm rotating between a bunch of different games. <laughs> I am playing again for like the second to third time, Fire Emblem Awakening. Of course, I'm uh, tinkering around with the new Smash Bros. on 3DS. And I've also been working on uh, Tales of Zillia. Never heard of that one. I... <laughs> it, yeah, the Tales games are kind of, I find, hit or miss. But they, they seem to have, like, they have their niche market. They have the people that as soon as you say, oh, this is a new Tales game, they're like, bam, I have to have that game. It's amazing. Uh, they are beautiful, beautiful old-school RPGs uh, with, not I don't want to say turn-based elements, but uh, I'm going through that one. I've kind of skipped a lot of the Tales games. I actually remember playing Tales of Fantasia on the SNES. And my favorite, actually, out of the franchise was Tales of Destiny for the PlayStation 1. So, are there any games? Are there any games on your wish list that you wish you had? Uh, <laughs> the Evil Within. I really wish I had that. I really want to play that. Uh, the fact that it's done by the creator of Resident Evil, who wants to go back to horror elements, and I know that Bethesda had a hand with the game. So, I love Bethesda games, and I love horror survival games. So to actually see what looks like a horror survival game done right, I'm very excited and I really, really, really want that. Uh, other than that, I'm looking forward to Bloodborne for the PS4 when that comes out. So it's no, a, no it's old a, school it's stuff. A, yeah, it's, yeah, Bloodborne is the uh, is a Demon Souls pred uh, game. So it's a Souls game. Ah, It's going to be hard as nails then. Very much, because it's going to be more in the vein of Demon Souls. Dark Souls uh, 1 and 2 were both good games, Dark Souls especially being hard as balls. But I found Demon Souls was just nasty in its meanness. Dark Souls kind of gave you a little bit more breathing room. Well, thank you very much, G1 Kanan. I was going to say it was the end of the interview, but it's not. Um... No. <laughs> I believe I asked you to bring along your most treasured gaming possession. What did you bring along for us? Uh, I, I, currently, like I said, I'm going through Fire Emblem Awakening, and anybody that knows me knows that I, I have a huge thing for Krom. So I, I brought my husband along to the interview. I make sure to <laughs> wife him every time I play this game. <laughs> it's your 3DS. <laughs> Yes, my actual, it's uh, my Legend of Zelda 3DS, and actually, wow. fun story Fun story with this one, uh, my good friend, Malice Last, actually, he gave this to me. I couldn't afford a 3DS on my own, and he knew how much I absolutely, absolutely wanted one, and a friend of his actually gave him this, because he upgraded to an XL, and he's like, I don't need it anymore, and kind of just like tossed it at Mal. So Mal actually got it all cleaned up for me. He gave me some games. Uh, he gave me Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, uh, Dragon Dragon Quest uh, 4 and 5. So, yeah. That's, that's kind of another thing with the 3DS is that uh, it was given to me by a very, very good friend who absolutely knows how much I adore Zelda. Because so, he's like, I really kind of want to keep it myself because it's really pretty. But I know how much you adore Zelda and how much you need a 3DS, so I'm just going to send it to you. <laughs> That's brilliant. And I only have one more question. I've not asked this one for a while. Um, is there any question you would like to ask me? Hmm. Well, I don't know if anybody's asked you this, but what made you decide to do this show? Uh, this is a show that I've always wanted to do. Always. And then I figured out, uh, and then I saw that. Um, Alpha Unit was doing it, so I thought, oh, I've got to wait then. And then G1 uh, <laughs> Features took it over, and then they wanted people. 
to come and start it all over again. So I thought I'd throw my hat into the ring. And here I am. And I just love talking to other G1s like yourself. It's just... I'll, I'll probably never get to SGC. So this is mm. my way of connecting with the G1 community. If that makes any sense. <laughs> no, no, it completely makes sense. And this is actually... This is one of the things that I absolutely adore so much about Screw Attack uh, and the community itself. The community is probably one of the best communities I have ever seen for anything, really. Whether it's games, movies, anything uh, with a following... The Screw Attack community, the G1s, are absolutely wonderful people. Uh, in all honesty, I feel absolutely blessed that I've made so many friends in the community. Some of them I have not yet uh, had the chance to meet face-to-face -face or to even like talk to like this on Skype. Uh, some of them, though, I've had the extreme pleasure to meet at MAGFest uh, and, of course, at SGC. And they're just all wonderful, beautiful people. Like They're fantastic. You know, They really have your back. And I really do hope that someday you do come to SGC, especially now that it seems that SGC is a guaranteed thing. It's not, you know, will we make it again this year? Will SGC happen this year? It, moving forward, it seems that SGC is going to happen. So hopefully sometime in the future, you know, you can make it down there. And if you do, I will hug you. I would offer a high five, but I've been told by people at conventions that uh, they're afraid to get high fives from me because I hit too hard. <laughs> I, I may I may have uh, nearly broken uh, Ori from the blast processor's hand giving him a high five it stung for a few days he said well I can't wait for that <laughs> <laughs> well that's uh, the end of the interview <laughs> thank you uh, G1 Kanan for joining me this evening no, not a problem thank you for having me and hopefully we will see more lady G1s on here also oh yes I have been Master <laughs> Wayne for G1 Interviews uh, on G1 Features. Good night, my friends. Good night, everybody.